Hi, Stampin' Peace friends. Welcome to my studio. I'm Mary Nave in Columbus, Ohio. And today is Thursday, the first Thursday of May. And it's time for me to do a 12 by 12 one sheet wonder demonstration for you. Uh, before I get into that uh, for today's project, I just want to share with you about my monthly 12 by 12 one sheet wonder program. On the first Thursday of each month, I will go live as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern time um, on my Facebook page, Stampin' Peace with Mary Nabe, and do for you a complete one sheet wonder demonstration, how to cut your DSP, the card layouts, and how to finish off the cards I made as my sample using the Stampin' Up! products that day. Now, what I'm showing you can be done with any of your favorite DSPs, um, and you will get all the information you need in the video or in the Facebook Live. However, if you are somebody like me and likes to have things um, on paper or print, I have a PDF tutorial that includes a supply list, color photos, the One Sheet Wonder template, as well as all of the card sketches I use in that demonstration, and cutting dimensions and instructions to finish your cards. There are two ways that you can get that PDF tutorial. Again, if everything you need will be in this video. However, if you would like that PDF tutorial in print or to download, there are two ways to get that. The first way is to purchase it in my PDF store on stampinpeace.com, or you can get it free by placing a $50 order during the month of May, and I will email the PDF tutorial to you. So that's how the program works. I've been doing this for a couple of months and um, getting very good reviews and results from doing this. People love to see the One Sheet Wonders. And I try to keep my One Sheet Wonders rather basic, meaning there's not gonna be a gazillion pieces and a gazillion different cards to make, okay? Everybody can do this, I promise you. Everybody can do this. You can even use, I'll be showing you current Stampin' Up! products, but you can even use products you already have at home if that's what you choose to do. So let me get started now because I'm really excited to show you my May One Sheet Wonder demonstration. First of all, I want to show you the products that I'll be using in this demonstration. I'm using the Take to the Sky designer series paper, and I'm using one sheet of this, this last one, but I wanted you to be able to see all of the sheets in the collection. So here's the first one. And the second, I love this. And the third, the fourth, I love those clouds. You can do so much with that. And isn't this a nice um, print to use on a background? We've got the airplanes on Mossy Meadow and another fun print on the back. And then this is the sheet I'll be using today and the backside featuring copper clay. In addition to that, I'll be finishing off my cards with the Adventurous Sky bundle, the stamp set and the dies. And to let you know how this is going to work, I'm going to be doing this One Sheet Wonder presentation in sections. So the first thing you'll see me do is cut all of my DSP. The second thing you'll see me do is actually um, put the DSP onto the card bases using the different layouts I've designed. 
And then lastly, I will also show you how I finished all of my cards for this um, one sheet wonder. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut my DSP. Now I'm using non-directional paper, meaning it can go any way. But if you're using directional paper, you might need to make some adjustments while you're actually adding the DSP to your cards. In other words, maybe changing the orientation from vertical to horizontal or vice versa. So the first thing I'm going to do is score, or not score, cut at four inches. I'm gonna cut at four inches. Then my next cut is going to be at five and a quarter inches. And then I'm left with this piece that is two and three quarters inches wide. Then I'm going to take each of these pieces in the order that I cut them, turn them to the horizontal position now. So this one is four inches by 12 inches. And I'm going to cut at five and a quarter inches. And then again, at five and a quarter inches. And my last piece is one and a half inches. So I'm going to then put these in one stack because I'll remember that's my first um, column or section I cut. The next one I'm going to, this is the five and a quarter by 12 inch. Next, I'm going to cut a four inch increments to get three pieces that measure five and a quarter by four inches. Those will be for cards B and C. And then my last one, I'm also going to cut at four inch increments to get three pieces, each measuring two and three quarters by four inches. Now there are just a few of these um, pieces that I will add more cuts to, but those are the basic cuts. You could make cards with those pieces as is, but the card layouts, card sketches I'm going to show you um, do require a little bit more cutting. So I'm going to take my first two pieces of four inch by five and a quarter inch from that first strip I cut. And I'm going to cut these separately. You can cut them together, meaning stack them and then cut. But when you do that, you still want to make sure the pieces go together. In other words, I'm going to cut strips. And if I would push those strips together, I want them to look just like this full piece. So if you feel confident, um, actually maybe I'll cut with a stack just to show you. but. If this is not the way for you, you're just going to cut both pieces individually, making the same cuts. So the first cut is at one and three quarters inch. And I'm going to do this top and bottom layer. My next one is one and a quarter inch. See, I'm measuring over to one and a quarter. Make sure both pieces are stacked with the edges lining up. Okay, this is a shortcut. Remember, you can cut these pieces separately if you prefer. So one and a quarter inch. Again, top and bottom layer. And these I'm going to cut separately just because they tend to move a little bit when they're so small. My next cut, I want it three quarters of an inch. Just a wee bit. A little too much. There you go. So now I have a three quarter inch strip and a quarter inch strip. And as you can see, all these pieces fit together like a puzzle, okay? 
They all match up. And the same thing with this last piece. Cut it at three quarters inch. And I'll end up with two pieces, one three quarter inch wide and the last one a quarter inch wide. And again, they fit together like a puzzle. So let's make these cards now. I've got my pieces ready here. I'm using a card base of five and a half by eight and a half inches, standard A2 size. I've got a piece of basic white for the inside of each of these cards, which measures four inches by five and a quarter. So in the printed or download version of the PDF, these are cards A, A as an apple. But you'll see, my daughter Andrea does my um, One Sheet Wonder templates and card sketches, and she does a fabulous job of labeling them, and um, it's very clear in the directions. So I'm choosing to use my multi-purpose glue to adhere these strips. The reason being, I'm not gonna press them down too hard just yet because I want to be able to move them or slide them around if they are not exactly where I want them to be. And when I do three strips at a time, I like to do the left, the right, and then the middle because then it's real easy to get this middle one right in the center and to get that even spacing around each piece. And you can see me sliding this just a wee bit. And I think that looks really good to me. So now I'm ready to press it down with a flat hand so they stay in place. Then I'm going to take that quarter inch strip and insert this or adhere this on the inside of the card. Just, oops, flipped over on me. Right along the right edge of my basic white. And you can choose if you want to put this on the right edge or the left. You can choose if you want it to go all the way up to the edge of the white cardstock, or if you want to leave a little bit of that white showing on the right side. So now I'm simply going to do the second thing or the second card for sketch A, card sketch A or card layout A. And I'm doing the left, right, middle. This is the way I've come to find the most success with for um, putting my strips in place and having good even spacing all the way around. So if you're not doing it this way, I suggest you give it a try and see if that works for you. You can also see again how if I would push or slide these all these pieces together, they would match up. They would complete the puzzle of that DSP piece, so to speak. Remember with your multi-purpose glue, a little goes a long way. Use it very sparingly which also makes it very economical. Okay, so that's card sketch A. I'm going to set these aside for now, and we're gonna move on to card sketch B. And I'm taking one of my five and a quarter by four inch pieces. So this is the now the middle section 
of the DSP I cut. And I wanna cut this at an angle from the top right to the bottom left corner. So what I'm going to do is take these two corners and set them on my paper trimmer so that each of those corners is right in the cutting groove. Now, normally I cut from the top down and I'm off the DSP. But when I'm cutting corners like this that are so small, I want to start on the DSP. Otherwise, if I start over it, it might grab that corner and kind of crinkle it or tear it. But this way, I can cut the whole piece without any crinkling of that or tearing of those corners. Now with this, I'm going to make two cards. Oh, well, come on. There we go. Try and keep everything in order. I already have my pieces um, to finish the cards stamped and die cut, but I'm trying to keep everything together. So this is going to be two cards. This time I cut my card bases just a little bit differently. I cut them four and a quarter by 11 inches. So I still get two card bases out of one piece of eight and a half by 11 DSP. I'm just cutting it, um, cutting and scoring on um, different directions, opposite directions of the other. So in each, I'm going to add a piece of basic white that measures five and a quarter by four inches, my standard size for the inside. And next I'll adhere my Knight of Navy cardstock, also measuring five and a quarter by four inches to the front of my card. And then finally, I'm going to adhere these two pieces of DSP. So these cards are considered um, card sketch B, B as in boy. So if you decide to purchase the PDF tutorial, it'll refer to this as card sketch B. Again, the, you'll, you'll have a template of each of the card sketches in addition to seeing the finished cards. Just like that. And then I'm ready to set those aside. Okay, next I have these other two pieces of five and a quarter by four inch DSP. And I'm going to do something a little different with these also in that, um, and again, you could make cards using this as your card front, okay? If you want to um, keep the one sheet wonder even simpler than what I'm showing you in today's demonstration. But I'm going to be cutting each of these and each one will make a different card. Um, now again, if you're not comfortable and you want to cut these separately, by all means do. For the sake of time, I try really hard to respect people's time. For the sake of time, I'm going to stack mine and cut them at once. But when I do this, remember, I wanna keep my top layer in one section and my bottom layer in another section so that they, um, they do line up correctly. And for this, let me double check my measurements. So for this, I'm going to cut these pieces at 
um, let me double check. Two and a half, two and a half is five and a quarter. Yes, two and five eighths. So that's halfway. Okay, half of five and a quarter is two and five eighths. So I'm going to cut these. And then each of these, I'm going to turn to the horizontal position and I'm going to cut at two inch increments. Two inches, half of four inches. Okay. And then remember, I want to keep the top layer and the bottom layer separate so that when I put my cards together, um, they look the way I want them to, like a puzzle, if I would push them together. So again, cutting it two inches here. Whoops, come on. There we go. Cutting it two inches, which is half of the four inch height. So bottom layer and top layer. And I'm just double checking, does everything match up the way I like it? Yes, it does, and I'm ready to go. So I've got two card bases of five and a half by eight and a half inches, scored at four and a quarter down the middle. Then I'm going to adhere my basic white to the inside. I always put white or some kind of um, neutral or light color on the inside of my cards because that way if you stamp a sentiment or something inside, it's clearly visible and it makes for better writing a note and for reading the note on the inside of a card if it's on white or a very light color cardstock. Okay. Now these cards are going to be in the horizontal direction. All right. And again, I'm going to use my multi-purpose glue because I want to be able to uh, move my pieces around a little bit if I need to. I'm going to put that one out of the way for a moment. So I'm just going to add some liquid glue, kind of put my pieces in place, but not press them down hard in case I want to or need to slide them around to get some even spacing. Whoops, that one's sliding on me. Press that down. This one slid, so obviously I want to slide that back into place. And the margins around the DSP pieces are going to be small for these two cards. So take your time and slide them around as needed until you are satisfied with the way it looks. And remember, as you're doing your crafts, your handmade crafts of any kind, really, we're aiming for good craftsmanship. We're not necessarily aiming for perfect, because what is perfect? Nothing, almost nothing in this world is perfect. So we're aiming for good craftsmanship. That means we take our time um, to put places, things in place nicely, to get straight lines, even spacing as best we can, that sort of thing. Now the next one, I'm gonna change up just a little. This is one super easy change you can make that is the same layout as this, but a little bit different. And that is, I'm just going to flip two of the pieces over two of the opposite pieces over to the reverse side. And I'll do the same thing here. Gluing these into place. That multi-purpose glue is 
um, rather forgiving, gives us a little extra time to work with it to create the spacing we need or we desire, I should say. Again, I'm using the Take to the Sky designer series paper from our new annual catalog, but this will work for any of your DSPs, all right? This will work for any of your DSPs. So those are for Card Sketch C. And next I'm going to go to what was my third column that I cut. And I'm going to use two of these pieces and then this last one and that one and a half inch strip from the very first column I cut from my DSP, these I'll be using on the last card, okay? So for this card, let me get my pieces out. For this card, I'm going to flip one of these to the back side. And what's going to happen is I'm going to adhere them to my card front like this. So now I've got a copper clay card base. Copper clay. It really does seem to me to be the color of um, like a terracotta pot that we use outside for our plants. And it's just about that time in Ohio for me to buy some outdoor flowers. Um, my sister and brother-in-law got me a gift certificate for Christmas for a really fun, really cool garden center called Groovy Gardens. Um, so I'm excited to go there for my flowers this spring. And next, I want to adhere these to my card front. So I'm going to, like as I said, I flipped the one over, so I'm using the opposite side. And I'm going to adhere this across my card front in the center. Okay, so I'm cent centering this piece as best I can from top to bottom. And if you'll notice, I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not, I'm not going to measure. Trust yourself, eyeball it, you can do it. And if you'd rather adhere this with the multi-purpose glue, so you give yourself a little wiggle room to move that or slide it around if necessary, by all means do it that way. And then this one, I'm adhering to the center and this time I am centering left to right and top to bottom as you can see. Okay, so that's card sketch D. And then for card sketch E, my last one, I'm also going to be flipping over one piece. And for this one, I wanna flip over that smaller strip. And again, I'm using a copper clay card base. I've got my white for the inside four inches by five and a quarter. And then I've got four inches by five and a quarter inch piece of Knight of Navy. So you can see the um, dimensions or the basic card base is the same with the inside and the extra Knight of Navy layer there. And this one, I'm going to put um, the airplane side down first and I'm going to center it. Okay. 
And then this, I'm going to center, go across and center from top to bottom. And remember, this is uh, that four inch by one and a half inch piece left over from the first column I cut. So let's just very quickly go through the different card sketches. And then I will show you how I finished these off with the Adventurous Sky stamp set and dies. So here's card sketch A, okay? And card sketch A, we have two cards. Card sketch B, which we've made two cards with. Here's card sketch C. Card sketch just means card layout, the layout of the pieces, okay? And here we, remember, we um, flipped these two pieces to the opposite side, just for a little variation. This is card sketch D and then card sketch E, which is very similar. So now let's finish each of these off. And I'm going to go in order. Okay, so for the first, oops, gotta make sure I have the right pieces here. Kind of disappearing on me, there we go. And I'm going to give you a couple of fun tips here. I've die, or punched Knight of Navy with the modern oval punch, and then I stamped You Always Lift Me Up in Knight of Navy ink on white, and then punched it with the modern oval punch. Now, a couple things I want to show you here. The first thing is I need a piece of scrap paper. The first thing I'm going to show you is stamping some clouds on here. And I'll explain why I didn't stamp them first. Whoops, where did that stamp go? Here it is. And I'm using, whoops, I'm using the smallest cloud. Okay, there's, um, well, I'll use the small and the medium, do it that way. There's three different sizes of clouds in here, large, medium, small, and I'm going to use the medium and the small. And the reason I did not stamp these clouds at the same time as I stamped the, uh, the sentiment before I punched it was I wanted to make sure I got the clouds spaced around the, um, sentiment in a nice way, but with, um, how do I say, having them close enough to the sentiment that they accent the sentiment or draw attention to the sentiment, but not too far away that there's almost none of it showing. So that's why I decided to stamp the sentiment, punch, and then stamp the clouds afterwards. So I'm stamping these with Smoky Slate ink. And I'm just going to stamp this one here. And that's why I want, oops, darn. That's why I wanted the scrap paper. Oh, that's not good, is it? Well, I'm just going to go on since we're on video and I will restamp this after the video since I got that edge, which I don't want there. But I'm stamping with Smoky Slate ink. So you can see, I'm just stamping around the sentiment. So they look like they're one, all the pieces, all the parts, stamped parts look like they're one, one grouping, but they don't take away from the sentiment that is there. Does that make sense, I hope? I think so, I think you get what I'm saying. So that's that, and again, I will, Restamp that because I don't want to send that card out with a funky little edge of ink there. 
So the next thing I want to do is layer these. But as you can see, the modern oval punch punches one size, right? So to do that, I'm simply going to snip in the center. And you could do this either direction. So the um, mine pieces are on the left and right, or you can snip in the opposite direction and you would have the Knight of Navy above and below. But this is the way I do this. I put some multi-purpose glue on one half or one end, and then I just lay it on top of the Knight of Navy piece. Again, this multi-purpose glue will give you a little time to play with it. So you get it, oops, so you get it spaced the way you want. Slid right off, which is not what I wanted. There we go, just like that. I think the spacing looks good. And I use my fingers on the top and bottom to make sure the edges are lined up. And that one is ready to go on my card. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the other. Put my adhesive, oops. Put my, ad oh, it's sticking to my finger. I must have a little bit of glue there. Put my adhesive on one end and lay it on top of the Knight of Navy piece. I haven't forgotten that I want to do a different sentiment here, but I want to finish out these cards and I can stamp that again and lay it right on top when I'm ready. But I wanted to show you this again because doing this um, gives you another way to use your punches. This technique works with lots of our punches. Okay. The Heartfall Hexagon is another good example. You can do this with circles, all kinds of things. And again, if you want border on top and bottom, you would just cut that oval in half the opposite direction. You'd cut it horizontally instead of vertically. And now I'm going to add these to my card front. Fronts, card fronts. One I'm going to put at the top. I like to show you some variations. I could make these two cards exactly the same, but I wanted to show you some variations. So, and then on this one, I'm just moving the sentiment down closer to the bottom instead of the top. Okay, so that's card sketch A. My two cards for card sketch B. I have stamped and die cut the large airplane from Adventurous Sky. And I'm going to add dimensionals to the back of each of these. And I'm going to put this one in the bottom section, the Knight of Navy section. And on the other, I'm going to put the airplane in the top section, also the Knight of Navy section. Okay, so card sketch B. And these are my two card C. And I've got two things to adhere to. For these, I used the stylus stitched, no, the stylus shapes dies. And um, I used one of the small banners and one of the circles, probably like a, well, it might be second largest. Um, but you'll be able to see, you stamp and then you pick the um, die that coordinates in size with it. 
So I'm just going to add these. Let me get my dimensionals on all of the pieces first. These are stamped, both the sentiment and the small airplane. They are stamped with Knight of Navy. The sentiment I'm putting in that lower left corner. You can put it anywhere you like. This is just the way I'm finishing my cards. Just depends on the stamps and dies you're using because the size might kind of dictate where you're putting your pieces. Okay, so to card sketch C, and then I'm going to do card sketch D and E. So this was D, card sketch D, and card sketch E. I'm referring to those letters because that's what's in um, the PDF tutorial if you choose to um, purchase that in my PDF store or get it free with a $50 order in the month of May 2024. Just like that, putting it right in the center. Okay, so let's just review. Card sketch A with the sentiments. Card sketch B made two cards with this one sheet wonder. Card sketch C, I made two cards with this one sheet wonder. And then one each with card sketch D and E. Now the last thing I'm going to show you is how I added my embellishments to each of these cards. For the embellishments, I'm using the industrial trinkets that are part of the Take to the Sky uh, suite. So one side looks like this, thus the name industrial. And the opposite side has kind of this pretty star shape, okay? Or star um, design, I should say. It's a hexagon shape with a star design on the back. All right, one thing I do want to um, tell you about these is that they are somewhat thick. Okay, they are somewhat thick, just so that you're aware of that. So let me show you how I use these on each of my cards. But if the thickness of these um, embellishments concerns you or worries you or you don't like to use something that thick because you mail a lot of cards, um, please know that you can use any embellishment of your choosing. But here this might be a better look for you of how thick those embellishments are. Okay, they do stand up a bit. But here's card sketch A. Okay. I used three on each, and you can see I added the embellishments just a little bit differently. Same thing for cards B. Just did the embellishments in a slightly different way. Cards C. One embellishment on each side of the banner. And we have lots of different embellishments. Um, and I'm sure you have lots at home that would work well for these cards. Card D, I did the four corners. 
of the copper clay DSP. And then card E, I did one on each side of the sentiment. So that completes my uh, May One Sheet Wonder tutorial for you. Again, all of the information you need to make all of these cards from my One Sheet Wonder, whoops, putting them in the wrong direction, um, all of them, uh, all of the dimensions, products, everything you need is right here in this video. But if you're like me and you like to have things downloaded or printed out yourself, you can purchase the PDF tutorial in my PDF store at stampandpiece.com. Click on shop in the menu bar, and then you go down to the bottom and click PDF store. I believe it says PDF store, if not PDF tutorial. I think it's PDF store though. Or I can send you that PDF free with a $50 order during the month of May 2024. Okay. Keep in mind that that PDF tutorial will include a supply list, color photos, the 12 by 12 one sheet wonder template, instructions on how to cut that DSP according to the template, and then the four different card sketches, or five, five different card sketches, and directions to complete each of the cards and dimensions for any additional pieces like the um, Knight of Navy here. Okay. Thanks so much for watching this video of my May 2024 12 by 12 one sheet wonder demonstration. I appreciate you and I hope you come back to Stamp in Peace with Mary Nabe for more creative inspiration and fun projects.